Let's talk about direct objects. We talked about subjects earlier, and the subject is the performer of the verb, the, the doer of the verb. Well, when that verb's an action verb, and earlier in the year we talked about action verbs and how they can be transitive and intransitive, when, it's a, when the action verb is transitive and somebody receives the action of the action verb, or something receives the action of the action verb, that thing or that person is the direct object. So, when the subject performs a verb, the direct object receives the action of a transitive action verb. If the action verb is intransitive, like napping or dreaming or wishing, then, uh, then there's no direct object. But if I, if I kick the football, I'm kicking and there is a kicking action and that kicking action goes into something else. What gets kicked? That's the direct object, football. Or if I ran a mile, what gets run? A mile. The mile is a direct object. Or uh, I greeted the principal. What gets greeted? The principal. And so those are the direct objects. A couple truths that you should know about direct objects. First of all, direct objects, always nouns or pronouns. They have to be. Secondly, uh, they have to come after an action verb or they have to come with an action verb. They almost always come after. Um, they can't come with linking verbs. If there's a noun after a linking verb, that is something totally different. It's a predicate noun. Um, they tend to come later in the sentence. And lastly, they never come inside prepositional phrases. Never, 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 never. And uh, this is, you're gonna, you're gonna find that there's gonna be a lot of things inside prepositional phrases that feel like direct objects, but they're not. So they're always nouns, they're never in prepositional phrases, and uh, they always come after action verbs, or come with action verbs. Now here is the biggest hint I can give you, not just for direct objects, but for all of the parts of the sentence. And that is to follow these steps anytime you tackle a sentence where you have to, to label parts of the sentence. Step one, cross out the prepositional phrases. The only thing that can come inside a prepositional phrase is an object to the preposition, so you might as well get rid of them. Then label the subject, who's doing the verb, or what's doing the verb. Third, find the verb. Make sure it's an action verb, because remember, if it's a linking verb, that's something totally different, but action verbs lead to the direct objects. And then lastly, find the direct object. If you follow these steps, you're a lot less likely to make a mistake, you know, label something inside a prepositional phrase as the direct object, or to mislabel the subject as the direct object. So follow these steps, and then when we add other pieces, like indirect objects, you'll see how important it is that you follow these correct steps every time. All right, let's look at some examples. In our first sentence, she threw the frisbee. There's no prepositional phrases to worry about, so we can move on to step two, where we find the subject, she. She is the one doing it. And the verb, what is she doing? Through. Now, take that verb and make it into a question. What gets thrown? And the answer is Frisbee. So Frisbee is the direct object. In the second sentence, he ate his lunch. No prep phrases. He is the subject. What is he doing? He ate. And now change the verb into a question. What gets eaten? The lunch. I found that taking the, taking the verb and making it into a question is one of the easiest ways to get to the direct object. All right, one last example. The cat ate from her bowl. Now, it's really tempting to jump straight to bowl uh, and label that as the direct object, but let's do it the right way. First step, we look for prep phrases, and sure enough, from her bowl is a prep phrase. If we get rid of that, we're left with the cat ate. Well, cat's the subject, ate's the verb. There's nothing left 
to be eaten in the set in this sentence. So there's no direct object. And then uh, a tricky one. What did you eat last night? Remember, in a question, things really get mixed up, and the word order is is a lot different than a, in a statement. So, no prep phrases. Let's find the subject. You. And the verb, eat. Now let's make that verb into a into a question. What gets eaten? Well, the answer is what. The word what is the direct object, and that's an. That's a strange place to find a direct object up at the front of the sentence, but that's because it's a question. All right, so here are even more examples for you to try. Uh, you might want to pause this, pause the video, try these on your own notes, and then see how you do. The first sentence, the teacher used chalk on the blackboard. First thing we do, we find the prepositional phrase on the blackboard, and that leaves us with a much easier sentence. The teacher used chalk. Who's the subject? Teacher. And the verb is what the teacher does? Used. And let's change that verb into a question. What gets used? Chalk. Chalk is the direct object. Secondly, put the burger on the bun. What's the, any prepositional phrases? Sure is, on the bun. So let's cross out on the bun. We're now left with put the burger. Now, this one's a little tricky. Let's find the verb, put. Who's doing the pudding? Oh, this is one of those commands. You put the burger on the bun. So it's the you understood. So the subject is the you in parentheses. Put is the verb. Now it's time to find the direct object. What gets put? Burger. Burger is the direct object. If you had rushed into it and not taken all those earlier steps, it would have been really tempting to say that, uh, you know, burger is the subject and bun's the, bun's the direct object. But if you take it slowly, do everything in the right order, you'll usually come to the right answer. Next example. I did my homework after dinner. First thing. Cross out the prep phrase after dinner. We're left with, I did my homework. I is the subject, did is the verb. What gets did, what gets done? Homework, homework's the direct object. What did you eat at the restaurant? So simplify things first, at the restaurant, cross that out. We're left with, what did you eat? Uh, here's another way to, to handle questions. Rephrase the question as a subject. You ate what? Okay, use the subject, eats the verb. What gets eaten? What? What's the verb? What's the direct object? What is the thing that gets eaten? And lastly, at Burger King, they microwave their hamburgers. Oh, not the last one, second last one. At Burger King, they microwave their hamburgers. Again, let's do things in the right order so we don't make any mistakes. First thing, cross out the prep phrase, at Burger King. We're left with, they microwave their hamburgers. They is the subject, microwaves the verb. What gets microwaved? Hamburgers. Here's our last one. She is the best athlete on the team. The first thing we do, cross out on the team. That's a uh, prep phrase. Now we find the subject, she. What's the verb? Is. Ooh, now, if you weren't paying attention, you would have asked what gets is, and that would have sounded weird. But hopefully that will direct you to the real answer. Is is not an action verb. So direct objects have to come after action verbs. So even though uh, there's some, you know, the word athlete comes after the word is, it's not a direct object because it comes after a linking verb. It's something else. It's actually a predicate noun. We'll talk about that in a later lesson. But just know the verb has to be action. So let's take the time to make sure that verb is an action verb.